Welcome to an example on how to estimate the value of a def integral using a power series. In part A, we'll find the exact value of this def integral, and then in part B, we'll integrate again using a power series. Using this integration formula here, let's rewrite the given integral as 48 times the integral from zero to two of one over, let's write the denominator of x squared plus four as two squared plus x squared integrated with respect to x. Notice in this form, it matches the formula where a equals two and u equals x. And because u equals x, differential u equals dx, so no u substitution required. So when we integrate here, we'll have 48, and then we'll have one over a would be one over two. So let's put a two in the denominator, and then we have arctangent of u divided by a would be x divided by two integrating from zero to two, so 48 divided by two is 24. And then when x is two, we'd have arctangent, two divided by two is one, minus arctangent when x is zero, x divided by two is zero. So here we have 24 times arctangent one is pi over four, arctangent zero is zero. 24 times pi over four is equal to six pi. So now we know the exact value of the given def integral is six pi. Now looking at our question though, it says your answer should be in the form of k pi where k is an integer. What is the value of k? So here we're only entering the value of k, which would be six. For part b, we want to evaluate the same integral using a power series. So first we want to find the power series for the function f of x, then integrate from zero to two and call the result s where S should be an infinite series. So we'll assume we know the power series for one divided by the quantity one plus X, and then we'll build from here to find the power series for F of X. Because the given function has a quantity plus X squared in the denominator, we want a power series for one divided by the quantity one plus X squared, and we can build this using the power series for this fraction by substituting x squared for x. Notice if we substitute x squared for x, it would give us negative one to the n times x squared raised to the power of n. Here we can multiply the exponents and write this power series as negative one raised to the power of n times x raised to the power of two n. Now we want to manipulate the given function so it fits this form. So for our first step, let's write this fraction as a product by factoring out 48. So here we have 48 times one over the quantity four plus x squared. Next, notice how we need a one in this position here. Right now we have a four. So we'll factor a four out of the denominator or factor a one fourth from the fraction. That's where this four comes from here. If we factor out four from four plus x squared, we're left with one plus x squared divided by four. Notice how if we distribute the four here, we still have four plus x squared in the denominator. So the next step, 48 divided by four is 12. And then we want to write x squared divided by four as a perfect square, which would be the square of x divided by two. Notice how this fraction here fits this form perfectly, where x is equal to x divided by two. So by substituting x divided by two for x here, we have the power series for this fraction, which means the given function is equal to 12, times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, again we'd have negative one raised to the power of n times not x raised to the power of two n, but x divided by two raised to the power of two n. So now we do have the power series for the given function, but let's change the form of this before integrating. Let's write this as 12 times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, let's write this as negative one to the n times x raised to the power of two n, all divided by two raised to the power of two n. So now we know the given integral is equal to 12 times the integral from zero to two of the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one raised to the power of n times x raised to the power of two n divided by two raised to the power of two n. Let's work on integrating this on the next slide.
we're integrating with respect to x, so negative one to the n and two raised to the power of two n are not affected by the integration. So we'd have twelve times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times, here we'll have x raised to the power of two n plus one. Now we need to divide by the quantity two n plus one. And we still have two raised to the power of two n. The limits of integration are from zero to two. But notice how here when we substitute zero for x, everything would be zero because of the zero here. So to evaluate this, we just need to substitute two for x. So the def integral is equal to 12 times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one raised to the power of n. Substituting two for x, we'd have two raised to the power of two n plus one all divided by the quantity two n plus one, and then we still have two raised to the power of two n in the denominator. So this is the value of the definite integral, which we know is equal to six pi, but we can also simplify this because we're dividing here and the bases are the same. So we would subtract the exponents, two n minus one minus two n would just be two to the first in the numerator. So let's write this as twelve times the summation for n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times two, all divided by the quantity two n plus one. So going back to our previous slide, we now know both of these def integrals are equal to 12 times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of again negative one to the n times two times the quantity two n plus one. And again, we know this is equal to six pi. And here we're told to let this infinite series be equal to s. Let's let this equal to s. Now we want to find the first five terms of this infinite series. So let's go ahead and do that. That would give us an approximate value to the def integral. So when n is zero, notice how we just have 12 times, if n is zero, we'd have two over one, or just two. And then when n is one, we're gonna have a negative value, so we'll have minus 12 times the fraction would be two over three or two thirds. When n is two, we'll have a positive value, so plus 12 times, notice how the fraction is always gonna have a numerator of two, though the sign alternates. And the denominator is going to be two times two plus one or five. Notice how the denominator is increasing by two each time. So when n is three, we'll have a negative value, so minus 12 times the fraction would have a numerator of two number would be two times three plus one or seven. And then when n is four, the value is positive, so plus 12 times two over nine. Of course, this continues, but we're only asked to find the first five terms, which again, we could think of as an approximation for the def integral. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We have 24 minus eight. Let's write this as plus 24 fifths minus 24 sevenths plus 24 ninths. Let's go ahead and record these. And a decimal approximation for the sum of these first five terms, it doesn't ask for it, but it's approximately 20.038095. Now let's take a look at part C. Part C says the answers to part A and B are equal. Why is this? Well, the reason they're equal is because, if we go back to our previous slide, we know this function is equal to this power series, which we know is equal to this infinite series, which equals S. And we also know this def integral is equal to six pi, which means this infinite series is equal to six pi, and the sum of these first five terms, we could think of as an approximation for six pi. And then it says if you divide your infinite series from b by k, which was six, you have found an estimate for the value of pi in terms of an infinite series. And we're asked to approximate the value of pi by the first five terms or using the first five terms. So again, because that the value of this def integral is equal to six pi, and therefore the sum of the first five terms would be an approximation for six pi, if we take this sum and divide by six, it would give us an approximation for pi. So we'll say the sum of the first five terms divided by six, which again we know is equal to 24 minus eight plus 24 fifths minus 24 sevenths 
plus 24 ninths, all divided by six, will give us an approximation for pi. I've already simplified this, it comes out to approximately 3.33968. So again, this is our approximation for pi. Not a great approximation, because remember, we know pi is approximately 3.14, but this would be the approximation using these results. Now for our final question, part D, we're asked, what is the upper bound for your error of your estimate for pi if you use the first seven terms. And we're told to use the alternating series estimation, which means the upper bound of the error, r sub n, is less than or equal to a sub n plus one. So by determining the eighth term, we can determine the upper bound error. But we already found the first five terms, so we need to find three more terms, the sixth, seventh, and eighth term, and we use the eighth term to find this upper bound for the error. We probably don't need the infinite series because we can see the pattern, but I'll go ahead and measure it again. Again, we already have the first five terms. Let's find the next three. So we'd have minus 24 elevenths plus 24 thirteenths minus 24 fifteenths. Now that we have the eighth term, we can determine the upper bound error when approximating the integral, which we know is equal to six pi using the first seven terms, and then we can use that error to determine the error when approximating pi. So the upper bound error when approximating the integral, which we know is equal to six pi using the first seven terms, would be the absolute value of r sub seven, which must be less than or equal to the eighth term of our series, which would be 24 fifteenths, ignoring the alternating part. So this would be the upper bound error for estimating six pi, but we want the upper bound error for estimating pi, so we need to divide both sides by six. So the absolute value of r sub seven divided by six would, would be less than or equal to 24 fifteenths divided by six. Well, dividing by six is the same as multiplying by one sixth. So we'd have 24 fifteenths times one sixth, simplifying we have four fifteenths. So the error when approximating pi using the first seven terms would be less than or equal to four fifteenths. I hope you found this helpful.